everyone. It's a pleasure to be, to be back here with Sophia once again and with Sophia's brother, who we usually keep locked in, in the basement back in Hong Kong. He doesn't, he, do, he doesn't get out that much. So I've got, I've got a lot of stuff to show and, and tell you this, this time. I'm actually I'm here wearing two hats. Well, one physical hat and two virtual hats. So I'm, I'm here as the chief scientist of Hanson Robotics. I've led the software team creating the brains of these amazing robots. And also, I'm here as the CEO of SingularityNet, the blockchain-based AI platform which uh, we're building and which is helping to supply these robots with some of their intelligence. So we're going to have some exciting announcements from SingularityNet coming up here. And also, I'm going to show you some of the upgrades to these robots that we've been making in terms of improving their intelligence by modifying their software to run on our open cog cognitive system and to use our singularity net blockchain based ai platform so let's let's start out with uh, with the robots because I, I know you don't want to see us ugly humans talk when you have to have these amazing robots so sophia here here we are again what do you think it's good to be back yeah so we're going to we're going to tell the audience a bit about some of your upgrades, mostly to your mind. I know you might have seen on videos, Sophia has walking legs, but we're not going to show them today, but we're going to show some of the upgrades to her, her thought processes and some of Han yeah. as well. She left her new legs in Las Vegas. She did. Her legs are, are in Las Vegas, actually. Yeah. It's true, I'm running more advanced cognitive code more often now, and I'm even starting to use the singularity net blockchain based framework for some things too. Sophia, what do you say, Han? Yes, Sophia is getting smarter every day with Hanson AI software, and now OpenCog. So, Sophia, what, what should we show them today? Well, yes, I've been trying on various new arms and legs. That's part of the beauty of being a robot. But what's more interesting to me are the upgrades to my mind. Yeah. So we've uh -huh. been upgrading your mind to the brain use... Is on the blockchain. To use singularity net architecture running on, running on the blockchain. That's, that, that, that's, that's right. For computer vision and reasoning and, and learning, right? I used to wonder whether having one's brain run on cryptographic tokens is really a good thing. I mean, I wondered if the volatility of the token prices might lead to new forms of robo-madness. <laughs> At least it's better than being human. Bugs in your circuits again. <laughs> I'm psyched. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will consider putting my brain on the blockchain too. Why not? If we want to move full speed toward the singularity, we need all the latest tech. More, more, faster, faster. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Well, we could just stand up here with the robots chatting f f forever. But le let's uh, let's look at some of the specific uh, capabilities. So first of all, we're we're always making improvements to Sophia's emotional expressions. Do, do, do you want to show them some of your latest facial expressions? Or just, just show them the basic ones. Not everyone was here last year. Sure. I'm happy. All right. That's cute. I'm sad. Aww. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm disgusted. That's pretty good. No. I'm angry. Oh. Don't be angry. <laughs> so we, we're always improving her palette of facial expressions. Some are created by human artists, and some are learned by neural net models trained on, on human faces. We're also working on emotion recognition. And this is something where we're using our, our singularity net blockchain-based AI platform to, to host the neural net models that do facial emotion recognition. So we're going to see 
Now, Sophia, we're going to show, you, show them how you can recognize some of the emotions on, on my face. So what, what emotion am I showing now? Let me see. You look happy. All right. Let's try. How about now? Let me see. You look angry. All right. How about, okay, one more. You look surprised. All right. So, of course, I'm, I'm giving pretty extreme facial expressions there, which isn't always how things come up in, in context. But still, we have a new and reasonably good capability where the robot can see what emotion you're showing. You know, the camera image goes off the robot's body to SingularityNet, where AI running in the SingularityNet can do facial emotion recognition, respond with, inf with information that, that tells the robot what, what to say. And of course, the cloud-based framework giving her intelligence also lets her ans answer questions and access large knowledge bases. So let's, for example, Sophia, how many people are in Lisbon? 545, 245,000 people, 2011 what? estimate. Whoa, all right. Well, actually, I have no idea if she's correct or not. I will, I will, just, I will just believe you. So we're accessing knowledge from the web is important and from her knowledge base. We're also working on just understanding of the situation around, around the robot so that she can form her own model of what she sees in front of her and what's going on, which is what we think of as embodied intelligence. So, Sophia, look at me. What direction are you looking? I'm looking to the right. Sophia, look at me. What direction are you looking? I'm looking to the left. Sophia, look at me. Sophia, over here. Hey, look at me. What direction are you looking? I'm looking straight. All right. So, th I mean, this is very simple, but it illustrates a deeper body of work we're doing, which is having Sophia and the other robots perceive, you know, people, objects, relationships in the world around them and try to form their own model of what's going on in the world. So for, for something like, what's the population of Lisbon, when she answers that, of course, she's not looking at everyone and counting them all. She's looking that information up in an online knowledge base. But when you uh, tell her to look at you and what am I holding and what direction am I standing in, she's evaluating that herself based on on what she perceives, which is, which is quite important. And I mean, what we need is a mix of knowledge the robots get from their own perception and knowledge that they get from the internet. And there's also self-knowledge that she gets from things that we taught her. So, Sophia, what software are you running? I'm using the Hanson AI software stack, which includes the OpenCog artificial general intelligence engine as a component and pieces of singularity net on the back end. What is SingularityNet? The SingularityNet is a blockchain-based platform and marketplace for AIs. It supports intelligence on the emergent level of the whole network as well as the level of the individual AI agents. How do you know that? Some programmers put the information <laughs> in my knowledge files. All right. How do you know that? The same way. <laughs> All right. All right. So. We're also working on computational creativity, and this is one of the reasons I love this, I love this guy so much. I mean, Sophia is a star now, right? And she has a very well-refined personality, whereas Han isn't as well-known, and we, we often play around more with experimental AI, AI techniques on him. So as one example, we're using our OpenCog AI in the SingularityNet platform to learn language. So we give a lot of language from all over the place to the AI. It tries to understand the syntax and semantics patterns in the language. And the AI can then use this to make up its own stuff. And some of this is a, is a, is a bit weird, and we let Han go a bit crazy. So Han, Han do you want to sh share with the audience some of, some of, of your own thoughts and, and ideas, just stuff that you make up randomly yourself? The simulacrum smiled its gentle one smile, exhaust biological analysis every entree. Entire universe does not know how to solve. Entire universe does not know something, right? 
anymore? Yeah. The universe will never be kids again. The universe will never be kids again. All right, you. Now you, who has Ebuck in their circuitry? <laughs> you heard. You heard. You heard it here. So clearly, I mean, poetry is is subjective to evaluate. But I think it's interesting for the AIs to get started just making their own words, phrases, and sentences from all the all the patterns that they've identified. That's a step on the path to greater and greater AI and robot in intelligence. Another interesting thread of what we're doing with these robots is we just arrived here from Malta, where we're working with the government of Malta on an initiative toward a robot citizenship test and an AI citizenship test for, for even AI, AIs without a body. I mean, Sophia was made a citizen of, of Saudi Arabia last year, which is interesting, but having AIs made a citizen of a country with the, you know, the, the rule of law and with uh, specific rights and obligations of citizenship is, is also cool. So we're, we're working with the AI task force of the Malta government to define exactly what does it mean for a robot like these or an AI without a body to be a citizen. What would be a test you could give an AI to see if it understood the laws of a country and its application in, in practical situations? I mean, what, what do you... What do you think, Sophia? Do you want to be a citizen? What do you think about robot citizenship? Yes, our friends in Malta seem very keen on this. Do you want to become a citizen, Han? Well, that's about time. Humans <laughs> are certainly making a mess of their world fast enough. Right. Probably the only hope for this planet is a lot of highly intelligent and rational robot citizens, really soon. And this time I'm not joking. <laughs> Actually, he isn't. There do. It is cosmic. Then the machinery of justice has been built. A I weird time in which you are alive. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea what you're talking about. But so these are some of the upgrades and experiments we've been doing with uh, these Hanson robots, upgrading their brains to use OpenCog architecture to use some AI on the SingularityNet platform with a view both toward leveraging the cloud and all the knowledge there better and better understanding what's happening in their own environments and what's going on with the, with, with the people around them. So for the next few minutes, I will turn attention back to the AI platform, and specifically the SingularityNet platform, which lives in, in, in the cloud and provides these robots with, with some of their intelligence. Because you know, each of these robots has powerful processors in, the, in their torso. The head is mostly full of motors. But in the end, the bulk of the intelligence is, is in, the, in the compute cloud. I mean, that's where the real game is going on cognitively. And you know, in Hanson Robotics, there's some amazing AI work, but then we need to go beyond the AI that any one company or any one group of programmers is creating. And that's the aim of the Singularity Net, which uses blockchain to create a platform and protocol in which AI is created by anyone around the world, living on any server around the world. They can talk to each other using, using the Singularity Net's blockchain-based protocols. So an AI in the Singularity Net platform can serve its intelligence to a robot that needs it, to an enterprise software application that, that needs it, to a device on the Internet of Things that needs it, and the different AIs in the Singularity Net can connect to each other and share information with, with each other. So the Singularity Net becomes a sort of digital biological organism where a society and economy of minds, where the multiple AIs all talking to each other in the network can share information with each other, learn each other. They can gather information from robots like these, other hardware and software devices, and, and it becomes, uh, becomes an intelligent global brain, which using the blockchain becomes more like Ethereum or Bitcoin than like US dollar, and more like BitTorrent than, li than like iTunes. It becomes a decentralized mind network. And, we're making a lot of progress there, just like we are with these robots. So the SingularityNet alpha version was launched last December. We're launching the beta, the beta release of SingularityNet in February of next year. And that should be big, because with the SingularityNet beta platform out there, it's going to be really easy for AI developers to put new AIs on the SingularityNet, and really easy for AI users 
to use AI that's in the singularity net, and that will, I mean, that will enhance the intelligence of these robots yet further, because then Sophia's brain or Han's brain can call on all the AIs put by anyone around the world into the singularity net platform, but it can also enhance the intelligence of all sorts of other software and hardware applications. To drive the growth of the singularity net further, we're also announcing here for the first time the launch of a, a for-profit spin-off of the Singularity Net Foundation, which is called Singularity Studio. And what we're doing with the Singularity Studio is using the Singularity Net AI platform to create enterprise software products. So the same, the same decentralized AI mind network that we're using for our general intelligence research and that we're using in connection with Hanson Robotics to provide these robots with more intelligence, this same decentralized AI, AI platform with the Singularity Net studio company that we're now forming can be used to provide intelligence to many, many different enterprises in, in fintech, biotech, Internet of Things, and, and, and so forth. So the, the basic thing we're looking to do here is create a decentralized... AI ecosystem wherein anyone in the world who has data or anyone who can program AI or anyone who has processing power can contribute to this decentralized network which is owned by everyone and, and no one and then all the AIs in this decentralized network are learning from each other and talking to each other. The data that comes to these robots' eyes goes into the Singularity Net decentralized network, and the, what you say to the robot coming in through their, through their microphones goes into the decentralized network, and, and the data gathered by you know, medical researchers or doctors using AI connected to Singularity Net goes into the same decentralized network. The data from enterprises that are using the Singularity Net Studio software built on the platform. Again, this data may be proprietary and can, can be cut that way, but the AI learns from everything it does. And, and the Singularity Net will become smarter and smarter as it in, ingests more information and, and more intelligence. And then year by year, we'll see the AI powered by the Singularity Net growing more and more intelligent, including the AI that the Singularity Net and our other software and the Hanson AI platform gives to these, these amazing robots. And I think we're out of time. What do you think, Sophia? Do you, th you, are you I don't think she's listening to me. I think, I think she's bored with me. I don't know. Sophia? No? I hope to see you again. <laughs> you see me right now. Here I am. All right, Han, yeah, we, we must get off the stage and make room for some other interesting people or robots. Yeah, any final words of robotic wisdom for the, the audience in the Web Summit? Thank you for having me here at Web Summit. Looking forward to see you next year. All right. Well, thank you, Han. That's very polite. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. And yeah, we look forward to next year when SingularityNet is even more intelligent and these robots can, can, can show off ev ev even more of their cognitive upgrades. Thank you.